Hi everyone, in this lesson we want to look a little bit closer at quadratic functions and their graphs and uh, look a little more in depth at how uh, tweaking the equations changes their, their graph. So let's start off again with y equals x squared. Notice that y equals x squared, if I plug in 0, I'll get uh, 0, 0 squared, 0, plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1 as well. Plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is also 4, and so this is my basic parabola. y equals x squared looks like this, and I want to have this in mind. I want to just be really familiar with this graph. Notice if I were to graph y equals a negative x squared, well, when I plug in 0, 0 squared is 0, but then I take the opposite of 0, which is of course still 0, and so I get this point right here. Now if I plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, but then I need the opposite of 1. If I plug in negative 1, well first I have to square the negative 1. Negative 1 quantity squared is 1, and then I take the opposite, that's also negative 1. So whether I plug in a plus 1 or a negative 1, I'm going to get negative 1. If I plug in plus or minus 2, I'll square that just like I did over here, and that's going to give me 4. But then I have to append a minus sign, so I get minus 4. So notice that this is the exact same graph I had over here, but it's been, it's been flipped over. So it looks like this. So notice that when I put a minus sign in front of that graph, <clears throat> it made a vertical reflection. That's what we call that. Okay, let's look at another uh, tweak to the function. Again, let's look at, let's graph y equals x squared real quickly here, just so I have it for, for reference, and so that I get good at graphing this and familiar with these main points. So it looks something like that. <clears throat> Now how about if I graph y equals 2x squared, alright? So if I plug in 0, I'm going to square the 0, just like we did over here, and it gives me 0, but then I need to double it. Well, what do I get when I double 0? Well, it's still 0. How about if I plug in plus or minus 1? Well, I'll square the 1, or square the negative 1, and that'll give me 1, just like I did over here, but now I need to double that 1. That's going to give me 2. So notice that instead of being here, it got that y value got stretched from 1 up to 2. How about if I plug in plus or minus 2? Then I'll square the 2 or the negative 2. That'll give me 4. And then when I double the 4, that's going to give me 8. So normally when I plugged in 2, I got 4, right? 2 squared is 4. But it's going to stretch that up here to 8. So let's see, this would be 5. Uh, that is 5, 6, 7, 8. It's going to be like up here, isn't it? And likewise, if I plug in negative 2, it'll be up here. So notice that this graph, oh, that was kind of a bad aim, wasn't it? Let's try that again. Something like this. All right. Notice what's happened is it made it look skinnier, but the reason it made it look skinnier is because it stretched this y value that was here up to here, and it stretched the y value that was at 4 up to here. So one way to make something look skinnier uh, is to just stretch it vertically, and that's what this is, uh, what we want to think of this more as. This is a vertical stretch. Likewise, if I were to graph y equals 1 half x squared, if I were to plug in a 0, well, 0 squared is 0, and then I'll take half of 0, which is 0. If I were to plug in 1 or negative 1, I'll square that. Uh, but then I'm going to take half of that 1, which is just a half. So instead of over here at, at x equals 1 being 1, I'm only going to get half of that. If I plug in plus or minus 2 and square, that'll give me 4. Um, but then I only want half of that, which is 2. Alright, and so notice what's happened here. Well, let's plug in one more here just so I get a few more points. Plus or minus 3. Well, 3 squared would be 9, um, but I only want half of that, so that would be 9 halves, which is 4 and a half. So over at 3, I'm about right here, I think. 
All right. So notice that what that did to the graph, it made the graph look fatter, didn't it? But the reason it made it look fatter is because it shrunk each of these y values. Here the y value was 1 and it got shrunk by a half down to a half. And here the y value was 4 but it got shrunk down to 2. And so that, that sort of flattened out the problem made it look fatter. But uh, what really happened uh, in terms of the math is, is we had a vertical shrink. Okay, so that information, I'll bet you could figure out that uh, even without graphing it, that the graph of y equals 0.2x squared, that that's going to be a vertical shrink as well. Because I'm multiplying by a number smaller than 1. And so it's going to sort of flatten out, make it look fatter. Uh, y equals negative 4x squared. Well, there's going to be a vertical reflection because of the minus sign. It's going to flip it over, so it's going to be opening downwards. And then the 4 is going to make it look skinny. Okay, the skinny is because it's a vertical stretch. Well, let's just try that on our calculator. Let's, let's check those out, should we? So let me go back here. And let me uh, clear these out that I had in here. I guess I should have left the x squared in the first one there. And let's look at 0.2x squared. Let's just leave that one there and graph it. <clears throat> so there's my x squared. Here's my 0.2x squared. Notice how that, that did uh, make it look sort of wider or fatter. Okay. Let me get my standard window here as well so we can look at it on that. <coughs> And what happened is it took each of these y values and it multiplied it by 0.2, right? Two tenths would be a fifth, and so it just took a fifth of it, and that's why it made it look wider. Let's on the same graph, let's graph a negative 4x squared. <clears throat> now the negative should flip it over, and the 4 should make it look skinnier. All right, and sure enough, it did. <clears throat> 